Yeah. Like, security dogs are cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So why don't we do, we were going to talk about sport and street dogs. Sport and street dogs. Yeah. And I, I got to preface this, I want everyone to know, I think, I think the sports, Schutzen and Ring, or K9 Pro Sports are great. They're international, internationally recognized for a reason. Like we talked about last week. Yeah, so this is not putting them down in any way, shape, form, or fashion. If I'm looking for a good police dog and someone says you got to shoot some one dog, I know that dog can make it. So that's, I just want to get that on yep, the table. Absolutely. But we do have a problem in this country with folks importing, because most of the police dogs in this country, if not well, 80, 70, 80 percent are imported, trained from organizations that train them in Europe, Holland, and a lot of people are bringing over sport trained title dogs because it's cheaper than getting the KNPV, for instance, a KNPV dog that's a, trained just for police work. And they're selling these sport trained dogs as security dogs or protection dogs. Mm -hmm. So we delved into it a little bit last week, and now we're going to look at how do you know if you're getting a sport dog that someone's offering you as your security dog, because that could leave your family in a bad way. Yeah. Come to find out that dog's not going to go in real life because he, for whatever reason. So we're going to delve into a little bit of how you can tell when you're talking to your potential purchaser or if you're training dogs right now, and you may, in all sincerity, the way you were brought up, you may be told that what you're doing is training a security dog, when actually the guy who taught you to train was always just training sport dogs. Mm -hmm. And you're sincere in your belief that you've got a dog who will yeah. you know, protect somebody, but it won't. So what can you do as a trainer to be assured that you're selling people or representing your work as real security dog work and not sport dog. Yep. What do you think, Scott? Conversation, thoughts, considerations? Let me just jump into it. Let's just jump into it and we'll go from there. We can let's uh, we can do this other first and we can go into what we did a few weeks ago and okay. distinguish the dogs themselves. Okay, so if for the person who's purchasing a dog there's one very distinct difference between most sport dogs and a dog trained for the streets, a guard dog for a guard dog company, whatever. There's this one little simple thing, and that's an alert command. It's the most important thing you can do. In K9 Pro Sports, that's the first thing we test on all the security dog level is an exercise we call civil agitation. And what happens in civil agitation is the agitator stands in front of you, a pair of jeans, maybe some cut-off shorts, t-shirt. Regular Joe, from the, regular Joe on the street. Regular Joe on the regular street. Regular Joe on the street. Yep. Yep. And you bring your dog onto a strange field where he's never been before, mm -hmm. and this guy is just standing in front of him, and you give an alert command for your dog to go out and protect you. And as the exercise goes on, the agitator will attempt to approach you, get past your dog, and what we do is we'll, if it gets past you, they'll thump you with what we call a thump stick. But what we're really looking for is that dog's initial response when he hears the command from the handler. Does the dog go, or does he go, huh? Yep. So you want, you want to get this alert first, then yeah. you can go into the transition phase yeah, if you yeah, like to. Yeah. So we're going to show you a video of a six-month-old Western Shepherd pup. And what we've done is we put him on a field where, and, and we started bite work with him. But right now he's on a, on a field where he's never done bite work. We've got the handler and him out on the field. And we've got somebody standing out on the field with him that he never suspected of being an agitator. No, he's never worked. And you'll see who the person, that's a surprise. You see who that person is. What we're looking for is, when you hit what we call the on switch with that command, is this dog going out looking for something automatically or is he just looking at you and wagging his tail? In other words, does he fully comprehend that this command means there's something out there that's a threat 
and I should go out and stop it. Hit the lights there, Miss Carol Ann. Oops, I forgot about that one. We'll set up our 3D movie screen. Oh, we ain't got the three. We ain't got the other two Ds yet, have no. we? No. Oh, just okay. We're gonna. We'll set and, up our one D. And our switch for all the lights at one time. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our auto I know, switch. I know electrician, and it ain't me. Yeah. Oops, got one more light. Poor little Carol Ann's running herself all around everywhere. All right. Ooh. All right, now before you punch it up, let me let me narrate a little bit. So here we've got, as I said, this is this is Hank. This is a six-month-old Western Shepherd pup. He'll be available for sale as a security dog in another couple of months. And is this the, is this at the end of it, Carol Ann, or the beginning? Because it looks like he's already been given a command. Whoops. There you go, right there. There's our beginning. So the dog is totally focused on the handler. She's talking to him. We have our agitator, who he doesn't see as an agitator. It's standing out several feet away. And she's got, can we hear the volume on that, you think, Carolyn? Turn it up as loud as you can. Oh, that's all right. We'll, we'll just run with it. Okay. You'll, you can probably see she's going to give a command. You'll know she gave the command when you see how this dog reacts to one word. That's all we're doing. Whenever you're ready. So you see, and this is a puppy. All we've done is play games with him. But he's a, but he's a big puppy. He's bigger than Carol Ann, apparently. You see what happened, you see his swing his head around? When he swung his head around was when she said one word. I wish we could get the volume timed with it where you could hear it. It's muted for some reason. I can try. Is there a way we can get a word? Let me try. We're, we're gonna try just so you can see the timing factor. We're gonna see if we can get some. But the alert is the most important thing you can do in a security dog. Because if your dog has a strong, intimidating alert and someone's thinking about attacking you, let dog. Well, we, well, we, do, we don't have we don't have that on on a mic. But she says his alert command. Oh, that was that was Carrie. You can hear her anywhere. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> now she just said the word, and he swung around and looked to see what was moving in front of him. What we're going to do is through civil exercises, through civil exercises, uh, as Agent Butters there, if you couldn't recognize in the background, through civil exercises, we're going to build the intensity of this alert. Everyone talks about, oh, I want a good this bite. I want an intense bite. I want this bite, that bite. But the first thing on a dog on the street is to build this alert. If this dog, if this dog at one word snaps out to the end of the leash like you saw this pup do and they're showing all their grinners and they're slinging slobber every which way and even growling even if they're not growling then what you're probably going to be doing is stopping an incident before it becomes an incident because no one's going to argue with a dog this big. Hit the lights Carol Ann. So as I said, <clears throat> we're gonna build this dog's intensity with future training exercises. We're gonna work as much on their intensity in civil exercises as we did working them, teaching them to bite a sleeve or a suit or leg sleeve, whatever. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's all in stages. First you teach them to, to bite, then you teach them to bite all over different body parts. You do not want a dog who targets one area if that's the biggest first indicator that you've got a pure sport dog. And that'll get you or your dog hurt on the streets. 
Then we're going to teach our dog, we're going to work on his bites are developed, they're full, they're hard. Now we're going to work on a fighting style, <clears throat> a, a method of retaining and detaining the, 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 the bad guy where the dog doesn't get hurt, where you can't grab his collar, where you can't stab him with a knife. Then when we have our dog, it's kind of like you got a kid learning to be in the MMA or boxing, you know. You teach him how to jab, you teach him how to front thrust kick, you teach him how to hook, you teach him all these mechanics. Then you put him in with somebody that he can actually spar with, and then in the end you put him in the ring with someone who really throw him a punch. So that's what we're going to do. So when we have a dog, as you saw there, he knows that bite. He knows his alert command. That's the important thing. Now we're going to put him in civil type scenarios and training exercises that are going to A, get him completely away from equipment. And you'd be surprised how many dogs, after you put them through all this training, mm -hmm. Scott's nodding his head. Okay, Scott, take it from here. So basically, we have a, batch, a few batches of dogs we've been training for a while. And uh, basically, bites are good, location is good, alerts are great. The dogs know they're hitting that sleeve, they're hitting that leg. They're doing great. They're, they're sending them, they're doing everything to a level now where they can get into civil ag agitation. Now, civil drive, <laughs> civil agitation. <laughs> So, so basically, that's a private joke. Folks. Yeah, <laughs> be a, a trivia question next week probably. <laughs> but uh, so basically, we took a bunch of dogs and had some scenarios out, civil, civil exercises, civil scenarios. Uh, one, for example, take your dog on a walk. Perpetrator jumps out, threatens you. Steps out. Doesn't jump. That's that's exciting. Steps yeah, out. Steps out. Comes up. You know. Threatens you. The dog gonna react. So we had a few dogs here, and uh, the ones that were ready to do this, we took them out and did that scenario. First dog come out, a couple walks their dog out, step out, threaten them. First thing the dog does is look at me, and looks at them, and looks at me. The dog didn't know what to do. He was looking for a sleeve. Basically, to go backtrack a little bit, so dogs come in, bring dog in to bite work in the in the in the yard. I sit there, pet the dog. Dog sitting around. I get up, put the dog back, grab a piece of equipment. The minute I touch a piece of equipment, the dog's ears go up. He sits down, starts barking, gets in position. The dogs have been working in these pens for a few months. They know the routine. Right. Like you said, take them out of their element. The dog didn't know how to react, and neither did the handler. One, the first problem was the dog didn't know what to do. The dog is very capable. The owner did not give the dog a command. And that's a very important part to alert your dog. Because look, I, I, know, I know for a fact there are some places that the dogs, dogs that came here have gone to other places to be protection trained and we asked him, what's your alert command? Well, we, we don't have one, never had one, never knew that. The, the basic foundation of civil work is not there. Right. Of any kind of work, you know, is not there. After the dog was given the command, the dog turned and reacted, and I fled. These are first timers here. We had, another, we had a couple more, same situation, and we had a couple that were gauge already knew. Yeah. Because they've already had, they were a little more advanced. And, uh, but anyway, no equipment, the dog didn't know how to react. The same thing with a home invasion. That's another scenario, someone breaks in your house. You know, being, you go in there, set it up, normal house, everything's normal. Da -da 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 -do -do. I break your door down, what the dog do you supposed to do? Dog's supposed to go. Hey, wait a minute, get him, anything. You know, and it comes to a point, if it turns come wrong, after the training sessions and you do it a few times, the dog will know automatically when that door opens if it's a friend or a foe. Because what do we do with our dogs at our houses? Someone goes over, oh, stop barking, get in your crate, hush, hush. Yeah. So at first, <laughs> you, 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 you yeah. wait, walk in the house, 
The dog looks at you going, what? 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 Right. If you don't give him the command, you don't know. Right. And with giving him that command, and the way you give that dog that command, and the way your body, the dogs react to body motion. Right. If you get tense, get him. So what happens after training and everything else? Someone breaks in, you don't have time to say nothing. You just tense up. The dog knows. Right. You right. don't mind me saying, I have, I have a dog, <laughs> Mr. Titan. Didn't know. So what happened? That didn't give him the command. Didn't know what to do. We did it. Great. Second time, he knew what to do. If even the Amazon man comes to my front door. He hears him in the street, and he's hiding around the corner waiting for him to come in. <laughs> they know. They'll, you know. they'll adjust and know. Yep, yep. So. And so, and, and what you've got to look at, we do, like I said, some people are going to, let me explain this part, So, because I'm sure someone's going to ask, why do we do all this bite work before we start doing the civil stuff? Well, it's real simple. You're not going to take this kid who's learning in a gym, and, and you're teaching him how to throw that jab and how to use that hook, you're not going to put him in the ring with somebody when his jab is halfway in terrible form, when he doesn't know how to follow through with his hooks. You're going to develop his fighting skills and techniques, then you put him in more realistic situations. So that's the same way we work guard dogs with my guard dog company. First, we teach them their skills. We're going to show them how to bite full and hard we're going to show them how to keep from getting hit when mm -hmm. someone swings a stick at them. Or we're going to show them that if they can't get an arm, they can take a leg. Yep. We're going to show them develop all these skills, just like a right cross and a left jab, right? We're going to teach them the skills. Then we put them in situations where they have to think. And what Scott's talking about, the exercise we're doing, when he steps out in front of these people and says, hey, give me all your money, or in the pro sports, if you're looking for a, a cert, security dog certification, when the agitator stands in front of you, all he's going to do is nod, and you're going to give your dog a command. We've got to teach the dog to think, but we can't do that until they've developed their fighting skills, their martial arts, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, you do this without any equipment whatsoever. When we do home invasions, anybody that gets a security dog from us, we do a home invasion with them. And we don't... We don't wear equipment when we do home invasions. We don't wear any equipment when we do any of our civil training exercises. Because doing so is just going to defeat the purpose. The other thing that some people, most people don't even think about is, like Scott said, a lot of these handlers, they were given instructions. You're going to walk your dog down this road and someone's going to step out and try to take and threaten to take your money. And you have to take it from there. That's all we tell them, okay? But they know this person's an attacker. And we had like, what, eight or nine that day? Yeah. And uh, on the first round, how many of the people, the minute you said, give me your money, how many people gave the dog a verbal command? <laughs> one. One. Uh, one overall. One overall. And, and this is an experienced fire marshal who's experienced with us. His yeah. dog's finished. Yeah. Because until you're trained without equipment and your dog's trained without equipment, you are not a street-worthy team. Because if the dog has complacency in a ring and the handler gets complacency, it's a pattern, it's a rhythm. Mm -hmm. You come in here, you know you're supposed to stand this way, you know what you're supposed to do, we're doing this today, so you know how to say, we explain it, we go through it, it's repetitious motion. After a while, you're getting comfortable. The dog's getting good, getting comfortable. And all of a sudden, you take all that away clean slate <laughs> in the street. Yep. The dog's lost, and 99% of the time, the handler doesn't know what to do. Right, right. Because he ain't been trained in the street. But the whole thing is, people need to realize that when you're inside the ring training the dog, you're also learning also. So you should take that with you, and after once or twice, it's the same thing. It's just a different location. Right. Building confidence for the dog and the handler, in my opinion. Right, right. So. So for those of you who want, who are looking for a dog that's a street already security trained dog, just when you go there, ask the, the seller to move the dog off the trading field and give him an alert command. If this dog hits the end of the leash, rah, 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 and he's ready to take you out, you got a real finished, 
finished security dog. Go for it. That's a great dog. If not, you may you may like the dog so much he may be a total sport dog, you know, totally trained in sleeve oriented or suit oriented because they they look they know what suits mean too. But he may be such great obedience, such a great disposition. You still want this dog at that point. You just need to find a street dog trainer because that dog will train up and switch over to street work in no time at all. Yeah. So there's no reason not to get him if you really like him. I bet you wouldn't take nothing. Yeah, and and you get a, you get a trainer if you have a trainer who actually knows about street work. He can have this dog ripping and roaring in ten sessions. Street and street training is very induced in civil training. Yeah. Yep. So you got to have a civil. You got to somebody that's telling you that they're training street dogs with sleeves. They, everything's based on a sleeve. Whatever they do, you know, maybe the first few rounds to accommodate the dog, but after a few sessions, you shouldn't be using no equipment yeah. or even yeah. a hidden suit, probably. If, we if, right. If, so, if somebody, if if your trainer doesn't take your dog when he's biting full and hard on the sleeve, and those, if he doesn't take that dog to a leg sleeve or a suit on a leg bite mm -hmm. pretty quick, he. That's, that yeah. dog's learning to target, so. Anyway. Yeah, you know, all this is basically for your protection and your dog's protection. Yeah. Uh, you know, the whole thing is protection. They're protection dogs. Mm -hmm. and if you're gonna spend that kind of money on a good dog, you're defeating the purpose of the dog, or you, don't have the knowledge of the training, perform what you pay the dog, get the dog for. Right. And just, you know, that's, that's my opinion. And that's pretty much the truth, I mean. Right. You know, it's for your your livelihood, you it's, know? Yep, it's for your life. Yeah. So, and like I said, you do it civil, there's ways you, and, and you always reward the dog with a bite afterwards. Someday, if someone's interested, we can go into why mm -hmm. we do that. Now we're going to get to our trivia question. Before we do that. Yes. Talking about the civil, we're going to have some, a uh, few podcasts coming up. Don't know when yet. It's going to be next, it's kind of hot outside to do all this. We're going to have some actual footage of civil work with these dogs yeah and we can break this down we'll have the dogs on sleeves on suits in the yards or in the rings then take these same dogs out we've got another batch coming up pretty good right now where they're you know they haven't seen civil yet and we're going to take them out and start doing civil work and then we can actually show you how right they're in. right and that's you know when i look around this country i realize that everything about any kind of bite dog comes from a sport nothing wrong with that but no one really has shown anyone or been a source for people I didn't have much of a source I got lucky I knew some old-time guard dog trainers when I started my company and they mentored me along mm -hmm. and so you know at this stage of the game there's not much information out there about dogs that actually bite people <laughs> and, and are paid to not to get killed for it so we're gonna we're gonna try to probably in the fall as things cool off we're gonna try and yeah. become a source for all of you who'd like to know how to make a security dog you know out of your sport dog. See, we're out to make security dogs, not make a dollar. Yeah, yep, that's it. We want to make good dogs. But all right, we got to do. I'm gonna do prefaces a little bit. We got. <clears throat> oh, first, let me explain. Whenever I do a a trivia question like on a breed, what's the earliest guard dog? Mm -hmm. What's the earliest recognized breed? Which I'm not gonna tell you the answer. Uh, and, 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 you know, I, I, I can predict pretty much the answers I'm going to get. But remember, my first criteria is when I'm talking about the first, I'm talking about a written source that describes that breed or that dog doing that work that's, that can be discovered and proven. So I know that somebody way before me wrote it down and said, wow, this was the littlest guard dog I ever saw. Someone like me found it. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of people said chihuahuas. Chihuahuas. Cause, yeah, because they're yappy, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they nip at heels. They protect the agave plants. Yeah, yeah. And Basenji was up there, but. A what? A Basenji. A Basenji. An African singing yodeling dog. Oh, OK. What else? Do we have anybody that has kind in? Last chance, any, chime any, in, any, Carol. Anybody, anybody last on the chance, phone? chime in. Can, can yeah. you look? We're, we're gonna look. See, if we got yeah, any last-minute comments. We still got four minutes. So. 
Now we, we may stretch it a little bit. Let's see what we got. Can you see it? You have to take it. I can't believe I can't believe second wind didn't get it. So yeah, I can't either. <laughs> yeah, second wind, where you at, buddy? So, like I said, I will not ask a trivia question that I cannot give you the sources for. Um, in this case, the question was, what is the smallest recognized guard dog breed? Uh, Carolyn said Pekingese. Carol who? Pekingese. Pekingese. Yeah. Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord. Hold on, let me see what else we got Pekingese, we got Basenji, we got Chihuahua. We're checking all our last minute comments to see if we have a winner. Because remember, there's a prize attached to this. And if not, it doubles next time. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Scott said if not, we'll double it next time. Oh, sorry about that. See anything else? Let me see. I'll give you some backup while she's looking. This breed participated in the first dog show, I believe, ever held. And that dog show was held in, and I, it, there may have been a one or two before this, but my sources said it was held in 1607. No, Speaking of that, hands. last night was a Westminster dog show. Mm -hmm. Oh, that bloodhound. Jack Russell? No, for the first time ever, a bloodhound won. Yep. See that old boy? Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. He was something, man. Yep. That's cool. We got working breeds actually scoring points in the show ring. So, yeah, we got, what was the last one you Jack said, Russell. Carolyn? Jack Russell. Jack Russell. We had a lot of people say Jack Russell, and they can definitely do the work. Yes, they can. But so, they're not the first. So, I'm going to explain this one to you, and I'll tell you my personal experience with one of them, and then we'll call it a night. So, okay. the breed is, it's what? The right? Lhasa. Lhasa Apsa? Yep. No. Remember, yeah. folks, we, you, you, little smash nosed dogs, can't, they, they, can't, they can't breathe. So, you ready for it? Hit the lights. Drum roll, please. The dog in 1607 that had been working as a working guard dog in Belgium. The Skipper Key. Skipper Key. Yes. Focus in. But we're focusing Hold in. On. There we go. It's on. This is the 15 pound Tasmanian Devil. If a Tasmanian Devil ever became a dog, he would be a skipper key. He did next, absolutely. He did the next frame, Carol. It's what? Oh, the next frame. Yeah, the next absolutely the most intelligent dog I have ever owned in my life, bar none, including Western Shepherds. Highly energetic. They have an affinity for livestock that is unbelievable. <laughs> In South Africa, they are used, uh, are popular among all the people in the horse shows. Like if you see the Kentucky Derby, the Belmont, you'll see in the thoroughbred horses' stalls, a lot of times they'll have a goat to keep the horse company because horses are social animals. In South Africa, they use a skipper key for two reasons. First, they have a calming effect on the horses like goats do. But second, if someone's screwed with a horse, this little dog will take you to task and you will be bleeding. Now, the name Skipper Key means little captain. Now, how do I know this was the first recognized guard dog? Because those canals up and down Holland and Belgium, the waterways that they use to transport goods, they, those, the captain would keep any valuables if passengers were on the boat and they had money. Sometimes they move money back and forth. All valuables were kept in the captain's quarters. And to keep those valuables safe, they had the dog that they named the little captain, or in, it's either Dutch or Belgium, or in that language, the word is skipper key. Okay. So this is the little captain. This is the guard dog for the captains of, of Belgium as far back as 1600. Yep. Now. Recorded. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Now, and, and to give you an idea of, of how smart these dogs are, we'll look at the pic, you wanna tell, we gonna leave it up while we tell the story? We can, sure. yeah. Okay, so so I won't go into how I got him, but my first little my first little skipper key was a little a little demon dog named, uh, I call Speed Limit. Speed Limit. Yeah, because huh? they're always breaking it. 
they do not sit still. And uh, I, was, I was working in the dog food industry at the time, and I'm sitting back, come back from a bunch of dogs, Skip uh, Speed would, would go with me, travel with me to all my stops. It just, everyone loved him, right? And so I'm sitting in my house up in Amarillo, Texas, and the way it was set up, I had a little, like a little sunken living room in the, in the front door, and then a hallway goes back to some bedrooms, and, and uh, Speed had a little little bed back there in the, and down the hallway, and it was a Sunday afternoon, as long as I, I'll never forget this, and you will soon see why. I was watching ABC Wide World of Sports. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, and they had the skiers coming down the downhill and flying up and, and busting their butts. And I was, I was waiting, they were gonna have the, the NFR, National Finals Rodeo was coming up. I didn't want to be bothered. And speed limit come out and he wanted to go outside. And I didn't want to come. So I just kept ignoring him. He's over scratching the door. Finally, he goes over and he, he lays down and he's sleeping. And they made an announcement there was going to be a delay in the program or something. So I'm sitting here twiddling my thumbs. And it's, I got to wait like a half an hour. And they were going to have, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, some ballerina or something competition. Boring, very boring. So I thought, hmm, this little toot was bugging me. I'm going to get a hold of him. So he would go, he was a guard, like Scott was talking about, home invasions. When you came to my house, First off, I had a long driveway. We're way out in the country, by the way. This is like on 15 acres, 10 miles south of town. So when you came up my driveway, he knew before you turned in and would sound off and let us know. And if you rang that doorbell, he went berserk. So I'm kicking back. I got my sweats on. I got my T-shirt on. He's sleeping. I'm like, I'm going to get this little tube. <laughs> so I walk up to the door. It's about 15 feet away from the sofa where I'm sitting and I open the door real quick and he's walked down the hall got in his little bed right open the door ring the doorbell and run back over and jump on the sofa and here he comes running down the hallway turns the corner peels out wide hits the door <laughs> I go, okay speed limit and I go out there and I open the door and he goes I remember he looks both ways and there ain't nothing there I said sorry buddy <laughs> <laughs> Close, close the door, go back, sit back like I'm watching the TV set. He walks back down the hallway, goes into the bed. I'm waiting, watching pretty soon. He ain't moved for several minutes. I think, okay, he's sleeping again. So I tippy toe over to the door. I crack it open. I reach out. I ring the doorbell, slam the door, run over, jump in the sofa. Here he comes down the hallway, spins out, makes a wide turn around the outside, goes to the front door, starts jumping up and down. Open the door. And he's just like, heart broke. Go back, wait for him to do it. I'm going to try this one more time. So I wait and I wait and I wait. And I thought I heard him snoring. I wasn't sure. I thought, okay. Now I'm gonna get him. Okay, no, I'm gonna turn on the lights and put it on you. Okay, 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 hold on. We're gonna turn on our lights. So he's over there snoring. Now I thought that second time, he may have come out a little bit quicker than I was planning on it. So this time I'm gonna make real sure he is asleep. So I'm waiting till I'm thinking he's dead asleep. Cause I thought he, I, I thought he came around the corner kind of quick. So this time, I'm waiting, I'm listening, I hear snoring. I know I hear snoring. I get up, I tippy toe over to the door, I open the door, I reach outside, I look over my shoulder, there's speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting down about five or 10 feet from me, <laughs> watching me ring the doorbell. <laughs> and then, like a true, true speed limit skipper key guard dog, I just for the hell of it, I just went bing bong, I hit that doorbell, and you know what the little toot did? Yeah. He jumped straight up and grabbed me right in the crotch, and I ain't wearing <laughs> nothing but sweatpants and fruit oh, of the loom, oh babies. And let me tell you, a 20 pound dog can fall to the ground pretty fast. A man with one attached to his mm -hmm, can yeah. fall to the ground even faster. faster yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I hit my knees and oh lordy. 
that was I was feeling to get the best of you that day. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's a, it's you know a good thing my, my girlfriend just broke up with me that week, so I was it was I was in pretty good shape. But, <laughs> but that's that's how smart Skipper Keys are. He figured out what I was doing to him, and I could tell you, gosh, I could tell you speed you, limit stories he, for days. He set you up pretty good. Yep, yeah, mm -hmm. he set me up, and 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 he won. So there's your youngest guard dog or the smallest guard dog ever, and let me tell you. They are bad mole hunkers. So, yep. There's there's a lady in Canyon, Texas, out South Amarillo. She used to raise Kipper Keys, but her problem was she could never sell them all because she'd get to liking them. Mm -hmm. And you, you pull up in her driveway, and like 30 or 40 of them come running out. It's like it's like someone took a page of War and Peace or gone one of them great novels and just shook it, and all the periods fell off. That's an only little black. <laughs> so. Anyway, there's our trivia question. We're yeah. going to come up with another one for next week. What do you think, Scott? I think so. Okay, so enjoyed it, folks. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Train them dogs and don't ever forget. Right, Scott? Right. It's all about the dog.